Hey Horror Shorties! Our sponsor for today's video is one of the fastest growing mobile games and one of my personal favorites thus far. With global battles, 600 plus champions, and more, why wouldn't you check out Raid? This game is available on iOS, Android devices, and PC as well. Please check out the link in the description below. Raid Shadow Legends has a variety of champions from different factions, including elves! In Teleria, there are two kinds of elves, the High Elves and the Dark Elves. This wasn't always the case, however. The Dark Elves were tempted away from the light, which started a dark cult. This separation started a war, and for 700 years, they have not been getting along. No matter the circumstance, I believe the Dark Elves are pretty cool. They are basically the good bad guys. Here's Alhain, my most powerful champion at level 30. I've upgraded her stats and all of her armor was gained while fighting through the campaign mode. I love that this game has so much to do and the rewards are endless. This month, Raid has a non-stop schedule of special events, including a Halloween lineup towards the end of the month. Special fragment events can unlock brand new legendary champions. Wanna head start? Please do check out the link in the description below and as a new player, you will receive 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard to summon an awesome champion. New players will also get Chonaru, an epic hero for free! You will find your rewards here for the next 30 days. See you in the arena horror shorties! It was the Halloween night of 2011, when I was out trick-or-treating with two of my close friends. For disclaimer purposes, I'll be using pseudonyms, as I like to keep the identity of everyone involved in the story anonymous. That being said, I'll go by the alias Mike. My friends will go by Tom and Jerry, respectively. We were all dressed as characters from our favorite childhood cartoons. I was dressed as Naruto, as that was my favorite anime. Tom was dressed as Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Jerry was dressed as Spider-Man as he was a hardcore fan of the Tobey Maguire series that aired in the early 2000s. I remember us trick-or-treating for about a solid hour or two around the neighborhood. I could feel my legs get sore from all the relentless walking and strain from carrying my heavy sack of candy. My bag was starting to get full to the brim. My friend's bags were just as full as they began carrying their sacks over their shoulders like they were Santa Claus delivering gifts on a Christmas evening. If I had a dollar for every candy that was inside my bag, I would have definitely had enough to buy myself a new gaming console. Guys, can we go home? Dude, don't give up yet. We still got room in our bags. Just ten more minutes, man. You're just saying that because you're practically wearing a onesie made out of women's leggings. At least you don't have to wear this stupid wig on your head. Stop being such wimps. This day only comes once a year, so grow up hair and let's keep going. Jerry began to make his way further down the street, while me and Tom looked at each other with a disdained look that screamed, let's get this over with quick. We then proceeded to walk towards Jerry's direction. I recall Jerry already standing in front of a house with his arms extending his bag towards the candy giver saying, Trick or treat! I also noticed this one trick or treater wearing a Jason Voorhees mask standing behind him. He was a tall and slim kind of guy who was either a really big kid or just an older man who didn't want to give up the trick or treating tradition. As we approached another house, Jerry said, Alright guys, just two more houses, then we can bounce. The individual wearing the Jason mask casually inserts himself in the conversation and says, Would you guys mind if I trick or treat with you as well? I lost my friends and don't have my cell phone on me. I personally didn't want this guy tagging along as I was already done with the day and didn't need any further baggage prolonging the night. I casually make eye contact with Tom and Jerry while desperately trying to portray signals to not accept the guy's request. Jerry enthusiastically says, Yeah, sure, let's go. Thanks guys, you made my Halloween so much better. We then proceeded to walk towards the next house while I began sulking under my breath saying, Frickin' prick, since when was Jerry the shot caller? After about several minutes of trick-or-treating, I could honestly say that I didn't mind his company as he seemed like a nice guy and introduced himself as Jason. 
no pun intended. We eventually finished trick-or-treating and decided to call it a night. Myself, Tom, and Jerry say our farewells to Jason as he responds saying, It was nice meeting you guys. Um, just out of curiosity, whereabouts do y'all live? Maybe I can walk with y'all home. Again, Jerry sporadically discloses the name of our street to him as me and Tom expressively show our disdain to Jerry for revealing such personal information. Well, how ironic. I live around y'all's area too. You guys mind if I walk home with you? Me and Tom remained silent as we made it pretty evident that we were upset at Jerry. Uh, dude, I don't think my friends want to you go- You guys look awfully tired. Just to make y'all feel better, I do know a shortcut if you're trying to avoid the long walk home. Uh, yeah, sure, dude. Count me in, dude. Where's it at? Jason then points his finger in the direction of an entrance of a forest preserve and says, We'd have to walk through there. There's a path that could get us home in about ten minutes tops. Uh, I'm gonna have to pass. I don't like deer, and I'm not trying to get eaten by a bear today. Screw it, I'm going. Same. I want to get home faster, dude. Later, Jerry. Me, Tom, and Jason begin making our way inside the forest while Jerry casually hangs back to go to his alternate direction home. As we got deeper into the forest, Jason took out a flashlight from his candy bag and began to flash it towards the pathway ahead of us. Well, I wouldn't really call it a pathway as the entire ground was covered in dirt, leaves, trees, and bushes scattered everywhere. I remember walking for about 10 minutes, but in reality, it felt like 30. His directions were precise and his voice was comprehensible. I understood every instruction he was directing us to walk in, but couldn't digest why the walk was taking so long. I had completely ignored the fact that it was well over 10 minutes. For better context, me and Tom were leading the walk while Jason shined his flashlight from behind while giving out directions. Yo, are we there yet? My legs are freaking killing me, man. Dude, when are we gonna make it home? It's been like 20 minutes already. We'll be arriving there in just a minute, boys. As we began to walk further down the forest, I casually turned my head to glance at Jason, only to see him wearing his mask still, despite trick-or-treating being over with. I started to feel a little uncomfortable, and began questioning the guy's integrity by saying, Dude, why are you still wearing your mask? And I'm starting to believe you're not leading us Stop! home. Stop! Jason then points at two shovels sitting on a small area of open dirt and says, Both of you, pick up the shovels now! D dude what's going on? Jason then pulls out a long machete from the back of his pants and says, Pick up those shovels and start digging a hole! What? Do it, weeb! Dude, please, just let us go! Pick up the shovel and start digging, Naruto! This is your last warning that I'm killing you both! That's when me and Tom pick up the shovels and frantically start digging. In the back of my head, I was legitimately contemplating putting up a fight with this psycho as it was two against one with the aid of the shovels. Unfortunately, I couldn't muster up the courage to put up a fight against him as I didn't want to run the risk of mine or Tom's head getting chopped off. About 15 to 20 minutes later, me and Tom dug a hole big enough for the both of us to fit inside it. As we were about to make our way out of the hole, Jason shouts, Don't move! Stay in the hole! As he forcibly grabs both the shovels away from us while holding the machete against us. Jason then tucks the machete inside his pants, grabs one of the shovels, and begins burying us alive with the dirt we just dug out. I began to feel my vision getting blurry as the overwhelming amount of dirt he was tossing at us impaired my vision. Please, I don't want to die. I'm too young for this. Please! Please, let us go! Why are you doing this? We're only kids! All I remember thinking about in that moment was how a human could do such an inhuman act and how I was literally going to share my remaining moments on Earth being buried alive with my best friend. I was at the point where I had already accepted death. I recall the taste of dirt and dead bugs going inside my mouth. The sensation of dirt hitting my skin was all I felt. That's when I heard a loud thud like he had just bashed Tom's brains out. I couldn't hear or feel any more dirt hitting the surface of my face. I rubbed my eyes to clear my vision, only to see Jason laying face down on the ground unconscious, with my other friend Jerry holding the shovel. Me and Tom then dig ourselves out of the hole and hop back to ground level. 
Despite surviving the catastrophe and being able to run away scot-free, I grabbed the machete from the back of Jason's pants. I then held him up by the forehead and began hacking at his neck, slicing and dicing repeatedly. I eventually decapitated his head while my entire Naruto costume was covered in blood. I remember seeing my friends nonchalantly watching me with a gaunt emotion, almost like my sadistic actions didn't even phase them. I then pushed his body into the hole as my friends began to collectively bury him. As outlandish as the story sounds, it was a true story that actually happened to me. I always wondered what heaven would be like if I was to die alongside my friend Tom that night. Jerry was initially supposed to head home but decided to follow us as he saw the machete tucked in the back of Jason's pants. He began to directly follow behind our footsteps and unexpectedly witness the altercation go down. As we were getting buried alive, he used the opportunity to knock Jason out with the second shovel sitting behind him. I still don't know to this day if his remains were ever discovered. All I know is that I had a deadly conscious seep inside my head that night. But at the same time, a hint of satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> if you take your young child trick-or-treating, you really have to watch them closely. Especially if you raised a couple of imbeciles like I did. We started just before nightfall because I didn't want them to be around other older hooligan kids who would cause trouble on Halloween. I let them walk ahead of me and run up to the houses while I waited on the sidewalk. I trusted them that much, and I wanted them to feel like they got the full experience without their dad hovering over them. About two hours after sundown, I was starting to see the hooligans come out, so I was ready to turn back and head home. Come on, kiddos, let's go home so you can eat all that candy you've piled up. Oh, really? Yep, can't stay out too much longer or mom will start to get worried about you. Okay, but can we at least hit some houses on the way back? Sure thing, buddy. So, we started to walk home. To my surprise, we'd ended up wandering into a part of the neighborhood I wasn't super familiar with. I got my phone out and put in the GPS route so we wouldn't get lost, but unfortunately I got a little distracted looking at all the costume photos my PTA friends were posting of their children. Suddenly I bumped into my kids. Dad, can we trick or treat them? My youngest son pointed to a house I'd never seen before. It was set all the way in the back of the lot, as if they traded all their backyard space for a ridiculously long front yard. I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be decorated for Halloween or Christmas, but either way, it had gone all out. It looked like a life-size gingerbread house with all sorts of candy ornaments, licorice, icing, and candy canes that created a sugary runway straight to the front door. Uh, sure, go ahead. They ran off immediately, so I decided to just wait on the sidewalk. Hey, that one's actually pretty good. I looked up from my phone to see the ugliest old lady I'd ever seen open the door and greet the kids. Don't judge, John, I thought, averting my eyes. Your wife might look like that one day. But when I looked up again, the next thing I saw were my kids walking into the house. What the? I ran up to the door and tried to get in, but it was locked. Hey! I banged on the door like I was trying to beat it down, but no one answered. I was starting to panic, hyperventilating. I peeked in through the window and what I saw made my heart jump out of my chest. There were metal cages hanging from the ceiling, piles of little bones on the floor, and a coat of garbage and filth over everything else. I scrambled, looking for something to throw through the window. Finally, I picked up a stone from the yard that was painted to look like a peppermint and chucked it through the glass. It didn't fall away as much as I'd hope it would but I already felt like I was running out of time. I climbed in over the jagged shards, getting cuts in plenty of places I wouldn't like to talk about. Inside, I heard the crackling of a raging fire. I followed the sound to the living room, where the old hag was tending the towering flames in the fireplace, and my kids 
The dunces were already locked up in cages on the floor. They weren't even struggling. Dad, what are you doing here? Just then, the wrinkly hag spooked and jumped up, turning around to face me. Without thinking much of it, I charged and punched her right in the face. She fell back into the fire with a flurry of flames and embers, screaming horridly and rolling on the floor to no avail. She succumbed quickly. Tearing my eyes from the sight, I rushed to my knees and started to undo the locks on the cages. Dad, you're ruining everything! Yeah, now we're not going to get any candy. I hate you! What did you just say? I hate you! I hate you! Fine. Stay in the cages and think about what you've done. Wait, Daddy, don't leave! Dad, no! Come back! Get us out! We're sorry, Daddy. Please, let us out! We're sorry! We're sorry! Please don't leave us here! Let us out! People who don't know about my story always ask me why I never go out for Halloween anymore. I tell them the reason is because I'm too old now, but only my boys, Josh and Tyler, really understand. But even they don't know everything. I've barely had the strength to tell anyone in person. Hopefully this will get it off my chest. It started out as a textbook night of hooliganry, with far more tricks than treats on our part. We jumped out of bushes and scared plenty of little kids. We stole about eight bowls of candy from front porches and played chicken with just about every car that drove past us. Our sacks were bulging with candy, and our heads were even more swollen with ego. Josh was holding his candy sack between his legs. Now this is how you go trick-or-treating. Tyler was smart. He was ready to turn in. <sighs> we should call it, boys. I don't think we can carry much more. I'd call this a success for the history books. I'm ready to begin the feast. I had a little more room in my pillowcase, so I was still willing to push my luck. Come on, guys, one more score. <sighs> Fine, but just one more. I'm getting tired of hauling around all this loot. I led them around the corner and hustled down the sidewalk. Then I saw it. The house that would be the reckoning of all the bad karma I'd built up that night. Look at that, boys! Whoa. Oh, there ain't no way, homie. Nuh-uh. It looked like a condemned trap house turned haunted murder manor. A winding path of cracked pavement crept up to the front porch, on which there were no signs of life nor candy. But all over the house were obvious signs that this property was meant for the fright of trick-or-treaters. Fake spiderwebs were draped over the windows. A single skeleton lounged in the rocking chair by the door. The lawn was littered with foam tombstones and animatronic creatures of the night. The typical tarantulas, zombie torsos, and rodents of unusual size. But the most unsettling and brazen ornaments of all were the mutilated mannequins skewered on spikes lined up along the path to the door. I believe we met our match here, boys. Let's go home. Yeah, man, we should really get out of here. Oh my god, you guys are wimps. You know this is all fake. I don't know how such a boneheaded sense of bravery came over me in that moment, but it stands as one of my life's biggest regrets. Whatever, I'm going in. You're nuts, dude. For real, you're on your own. I was already halfway to the porch. Whatever, just wait for me out here. I climbed up the creaky steps and examined the skeleton that greeted me. There were fake cockroaches in his lap and in his eye sockets. His bony hands held a sign that read, Enter, if you dare. So cheesy. The front door was heavily splintered, and someone had splattered fake blood all over the handle. Inside, I heard faint screaming and shattering glass, but nothing that couldn't be spooky ambience from hidden speakers. I looked back to my friends. They were already getting bored and digging through their sacks of candy. I had to make it quick. They wouldn't sit around and wait on me forever. When I turned the door handle, the fake blood smeared all over my hand. Ew, gross. 
I pressed on and entered the house. The interior had the same aesthetic, more spiderwebs and fake skeletons. But this time, the rats and cockroaches were real. They scurried around my feet and fled from my presence. I walked as quietly as I could down the long, narrow hallway, but every floorboard creaked and groaned under my weight. Then, I started hearing it. The sound that echoes in my nightmares to this day. Thumping, like someone pounding on wood. And with every strike, a horrible squelching. Followed by a bone-chilling scrape. Thud, squish, scratch. Thud, squish, scratch. My heart started pounding. I wasn't feeling nearly so courageous as before, but I still wasn't ready to give up. I desperately wanted the king-sized prize at the end of this terrible hallway, and the fame of fearlessness. The sound grew louder and louder as I approached an open doorway on my left. I knew that was where the sound was coming from. I crept up to the hole in the wall and tried to steal myself, hyping myself up to get the bag and flee. But a light shined through the doorway, casting a shadow on the floor before me. I saw the shape of a man with a long knife in his hand, swinging down his blade again and again in perfect sync with the sound. Thud, squish, scratch. I peeked my head around the corner and peered into the kitchen. I couldn't believe what I saw, but I'll never forget it. There he was, the man with the knife, dressed in a bloody coverall with messy slick back hair and a mask that looked like the severed face of his victim. He had the still bleeding corpse of a man on a butcher block and he was chopping the body to bits. I watched him do it several times frozen in fear. He slammed the blade into the flesh, slicing through bone and all, spewing blood in every direction. Then he carefully removed the edge from the wood of the block with one sliding motion. He raised his hand up high, ready to repeat the motion until there was nothing left of his victim. He was focused, methodical, thud, squish, scratch. This was no run-of-the-mill Michael Myers fanatic. This was him, Michael Myers incarnate, in the flesh and indisputable. The pace and desperation of my breaths became audible. My heart sank as Myers turned his head towards me. This reincarnation of Myers must have been some kind of beast because the scream that he let out. I saw him step toward me and I bolted, dropping my sack of candy on the floor. I slammed the front door behind me and jumped off the porch. I lost my footing and skidded down the pavement, scraping to a stop right where my friends were sitting on the sidewalk. Jeez, Ken, what got into you? I clamored to my feet and said only, Run! What? Just then, Michael kicked down the door and started running towards us at full speed. We dropped everything and split up, sprinting away as fast as humanly possible. Later that night, we met up at my house. I was very happy to see that none of my friends were hurt, but they were pretty upset with me. Dude, why'd you scare us like that? Yeah, you made us drop all the candy we had. If you hadn't spooked us, we'd be eating like kings right now. Guys, you don't understand, that was real! No way, dude. It was just some guy dressed as Michael Myers. He just got you so good you made us think he was real for a second. But come on, all that stuff was fake. Yeah, man, you said it yourself. You should have just left it alone if you scare so easily. Come on, guys, you gotta believe me! Yeah, we believe you're a wuss. No matter how much I tried to explain to them what I saw, they didn't believe me. But they were still good friends at least and stayed over at my house for the night as per our original plan. My mom gave us all the candy she had left over from the trick-or-treaters, which almost made up for our lost loot. For a moment, I started to believe them, that this was all fake and I'd gotten thoroughly pranked by some creep loser in a nasty house. But when morning came, our peace was shattered completely. We came out to the living room where the news was playing on the TV. A terrible tragedy occurred last night in the midst of the Halloween celebration. 
Police say their main suspect is a man dressed as the popular horror movie villain Michael Myers from the Halloween franchise, who was spotted before sunrise this morning reportedly terrorizing children while armed with a knife. 